Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to go through another example on bearing capacity for shallow footings. So here we have our shallow footing and it is eccentrically loaded and there's also a water table which lies at a certain depth below the base of the footing. Now we're dealing with a sandy soil here so this means that our cohesion is equal to zero. And our unit weight for the soil is 20 kilonewtons per meters cubed. And our angle of friction is 40 degrees. And we're, inter we're interested in finding out what the maximum allowable force is when our factor of safety is 2.5. So let's first address the eccentric loading. Because our compressive force is not acting through the center of our footing, we need to determine a dimension which is known as the effective width. So that's B dash, which is equal to B minus 2E, where E is our eccentricity. So we can determine our eccentricity E by considering what half the width of the, half the width of the shallow, found, uh, shallow footing, what that is, so that's 2 minus minus the distance that the force is acting from the edge of the footing so that's 1.5 so eccentricity is 0 0.5 meters think of the eccentricity as being the distance between where the load is act actually acting and the center of the footing so that was 2 meters here and the center is at this point that's our eccentricity right there Okay, so our effective width, that's base, uh, sorry, the width 4 minus 2 multiplied by 0 0.5. So our effective width is 3 meters. So now we also have to consider the effect of the water table below the base of the footing. So let me introduce you to a new expression. So the design unit weight of the soil is equal to the effective unit weight of the soil plus the depth of the water table below the base of the footing divided by the width of the footing multiplied by the unit weight of water. So our unit weight is 20, our total, total unit weight, so 20 minus 9.8 plus, so D, D is just this distance here, so that's 3 minus 1.5, 1.5 divided by, divided by our width, which is, sorry, we should be effective width, so that's 3 meters multiplied by the unit weight of water, 9.8. So this gives us a gamma design of 15.1 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Now the drained friction angle of our soil is 40 degrees. So going to, t to this table, we can read off our values for NC, NQ, N gamma, and this final expression here. So from the table, NC is equal to 75.3, NQ is equal to 64.2, N gamma, that's 79.5, and the final expression, 2 tan phi, 1 minus sine phi squared, that's 0 0.21. We also need to determine our depth factor because the base of our shallow footing is at a certain depth below the surface of the soil. 
So we can go to this uh, this table to get our expressions for the depth factor. So we have DC here, DQ, and D gamma. We can actually ignore NC and DC because our cohesion is equal to zero, so that exp that portion of Hansen's equation actually cancels out. So let's just go and find DQ. So 1 plus 0 0.21, 1 1.5 divided by 3, that's 1.105. And D gamma is 1.0. Let's find our pressure which acts at the base of the footing. QO. So that's just 1.5 multipli multiplied by 20. And we'll use the total unit weight here because this part of the soil is above our water table. So 1.5 multiplied by 20, that gives us 30 kPa. So we can now go ahead and find our ultimate bearing capacity of a shallow footing. So Q O N Q D Q plus 0.5. Here we use gamma design multiplied by the effective width N gamma D gamma. So this is 30 multiplied by NQ. So sorry, wrong, wrong number. 64.2 times DQ 1.105 plus 0 0.5 gamma design that's 15.1 our effective width 3 meters multiplied by n gamma which is 79.5 multiplied by d gamma which is just 1 so therefore our ultimate bearing capacity is 3928.9 kPa and converting this to a load that's just QU multiplied by our effective area so 3928.9 multiplied by the width, which is 3 meters, multiplied by a unit length of 1. So this gives us 11,786.7 kilonewtons per meter run. And now our maximum allowable force. That's just our maximum ultimate fo force divided by a factor of safety F. So our factor of safety was 2.5. So 11,786 divided by 2.5. This gives us 4,714.7 kilonewtons per meter run. And that's it for today's video. Hope this helps guys.